Okay, so this monitor has appeared in like four videos, I think, at this point on our channel. So you probably know how amazing it is. It's got a whole laundry list of features, some of which you might actually care a lot about, like a 4K resolution screen, 144 hertz, depending on how you interpret that, refresh rate, and I mean, it's got some other stuff that you might not care about, uh, HDR, G-Sync, professional grade color accuracy, and of course, uh, oh, it's, it's heavy. RGB lighting. Oh, and of course, right, it costs 2,000 freaking dollars. But what if you could take away the extra RGB cherries on top and just get the stuff that you really care about? The 4K and the high refresh rate. This, my friends, is the Wasabi Mango, which, yes, is really what it's called. Thank you, Korea. This is their UHD 430. It's a 43 inch, 120 hertz, 4K display for over $500 less than this one over here. Thermaltake's View 71 case supports mini ITX, micro ATX, ATX, and EATX motherboards with a variety of mounting options for your GPU and radiator. Check it out today at the link below. So the Wasabi Mango UHD 430, believe it or not, was actually the first commercially available monitor to take full advantage of the DisplayPort 1.4 spec, which means that over a single cable, it has enough bandwidth for the display's 3840 by 2160 resolution at 120 hertz without any chroma subsampling. So no, it's not 144 hertz, but depending who you ask, Neither is this one. By the way, you should check out the full review for this thing here. It is, it is pretty freaking amazing. So you might be wondering, if the UHD 430 came out first, why is this review only coming out now? That's because this thing is only available for purchase in South Korea. But now, thanks to enterprising exporters, you can actually get your very own in North America on eBay for $1,400 with free international shipping. That is a full $600 cheaper than the ASUS and Acer offerings. Hold on a second, it's 43 inches. It does have DisplayPort, but is this thing just a TV with DisplayPort? Is it even any good for gaming? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. Like this thing might kind of look like a TV. Like look, look at this, look at this stand here and everything. It might even kind of like smell like a TV, but it feels, it games like a gaming monitor. I mean, we consistently saw impressively low input lag and even the response times feel great considering that this is an IPS panel. Like there's barely any motion blur to be seen on it. Now, of course, Going for a budget option. Can I call a $1,400 monitor budget? I mean, first, there is no variable refresh rate technology. No G-Sync, no FreeSync even. And since 4K games take a lot of uh, PEPA to run, well, you're likely to be in the 40 to 60 FPS range when you're playing AAA titles. Even if you're running a GTX 1080 Ti or a Titan V, like this machine is actually. And that's the exact frame rate range where the most dramatic effects of variable refresh rate can be seen. With that said, your mileage may vary depending on the games you play and even how much you notice or care about tearing or stuttering and that sort of thing. Also, there is a chance that the UHD 430 will get a FreeSync support in the future via a firmware update. That's actually the method that Wasabi Mango used to upgrade their UHD 420 way back in 2015. UHD 420. Compromise number the next is uh, the HDR. That, uh, oh yes, there it is. So it's on the box and it, they claim it supports HDR, but this is one of those HDR-int 
kind of displays where it only reaches 400 nit peak brightness. True HDR really demands a minimum of 1000 nits peak brightness. And while we're at it, we should note that you can't get 120 hertz, 10 bit color, and HDR turned on all at the same time. You actually need to turn the refresh rate down to 98 hertz to really experience HDR. Otherwise, the bit depth gets downgraded to 8 bit. Which, I mean, on the subject of bit depths and color accuracy. Um, well, the AU Optronics panel that is in the ASUS PG27UQ and the Acer X27 is a quantum dot panel, giving it very accurate color over a wide gamut. This one? Well, let's just say it has good coverage of the sRGB color space. I mean, it is AHIPS after all. But then it has what we would describe as Bork all, as far as DCI-P3 coverage goes, and colors that are definitely not accurate enough for any serious photo editors out there, let alone profile. I, I wouldn't edit a picture I took on my phone on this thing, quite frankly, looking at it side by side with a real monitor. Finally, if you're into that sort of thing, there's no RGB or glowing lights or anything like that. But at least the chassis actually isn't half bad. It does have like a brushed uh, anodized aluminum face, even if the bezels aren't super skinny. It's got a vase mount compatible back, so you can put it on an arm if you're, or wall mount if you're into that sort of thing. And it's got side accessible IO with two DisplayPort 1.4 ports, three HDMI 2.0 ports, and a Toslink optical audio jack, which you might actually use since the included speakers, while definitely appreciated, don't sound great and aren't even loud enough for monitor use, let alone TV use. So should you buy this monitor? I mean, I guess if you've got a powerful enough rig to actually take advantage of 4K 120 Hertz in at least some of your favorite games and you really want to be an early adopter, then the five to six hundred ish dollar price difference makes it easier to justify. Not to mention that it is 16 inches bigger to boot. Though that does mean that the pixel density drops from 163 pixels per inch on this guy to about 104 on this one. So you won't be sitting that close anyway. At least that is unless you are playing one of those visual novels that I definitely don't know anything about. Ting is the mobile carrier that does service contracts a little differently. In the sense that there are no contracts. There's no overage fees or any other carrier tricks like that. You just pay a fair price for the talk, text, and data that you actually use every month. And Ting gives you complete control over your cell phone account. You can set alerts and caps for each device on your account to keep your usage in check. Nationwide LTE coverage means that you'll have great coverage from coast to coast and almost any phone will work with Ting from that ancient Motorola Razr sitting in your basement to the latest Samsung Galaxy S9 or iPhone 10. So check your phone's compatibility and get 25 bucks off your bill or towards a new phone at linus.ting.com. We're going to have that linked below. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit the like button, or maybe check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured. Oh, it's not bad, okay. In the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. Now, if you'll excuse me, that was the wrong alt tab. That's more like it.